there and welcome to week four, part two. Today in this video, we are going to learn about web development, um, front end, back end, client, server, understand these terms and uh, get to the bottom of what they mean and what they are. And we're also going to talk about the big three components and um, kind of languages and tools that you use when you um, code on the front end side, meaning the thing that you see as a user, uh, the website itself, what you get presented with, the big three um, languages that you code in um, when you work uh, on the website that the user sees. So without further ado, let's learn some about web development. So what is web development? Well, web development is building and maintaining websites. So you have really two parts of this. You have the front end, and that is what the user sees in their browser. Um, that is the visual layout, the design, everything the user interacts with, um, buttons that they click on, um, everything that they see and interact with. And then you have the backend. That is where the server is. That is where a lot of the behind the scenes uh, processing happens. So for example, that's where they, um, the server interacts with databases. The server um, performs calculations. The server um, does all the behind the scenes actions um, that the user doesn't see. So the whole web is built on this model and this way of operating that you as the user type in something in your um, uh, in your search bar or in your in your where you type in the URLs, the address, and you ask a server for a resource. Um, when we say resource in this case, or in most cases, we, we mean a web page. You're asking, hey, can I get the code for this specific web page? So who do you ask? You in the front end send a request to a server and you say, can I get the code that um, lives on this uh, web address, this URL? The server gets this and it determines if you are authorized to see this. Most of the time you are, because uh, instances where you're not authorized if it's you, is if you need a password or if it's um, information that you, as a user, that it's not general information. Um, but when you are, um, when you have permission to, to view this, their services absolutely. And then when you've requested something, it sends back a response. And that response usually is then the code for the website. So I like to think of it as um, a, a mail service. You, you say, hey, can I get this? You send it, uh, the server uh, receives your request and it goes, absolutely. And then it sends it back just like over the mail. And that is how the whole web basically operates. It can also be helpful to think of this in terms of uh, a shop front or a restaurant, uh, really. So when you go to the front end, the, the, the thing you have in your web browser, that is just the, the layout, the, um, the visual design, the um, components that you can see and interact with uh, um, on a web, web page, on a website. So what you can do as a user on the front end is uh, give input. So clicking a button, that is an input. Um, clicking on uh, the menu and going into another page on your website, that is also an input. Or typing in a search term and hitting search, uh, that is a type of input. So it, it captures this input uh, and visualizes the web page. And once it's done, captured the input, that input is then sent to the backend, the server. And that's where all the heavy lifting is doing. That's the, that's the kitchen in the restaurant. 
So say that you are typing in a password, um, a login and a password. So you have the front end that visualizes where you type it in and you have a button that allows you to send that um, to the server. You send a request to log in to your site. So that get, you have the input and that gets sent to the server. There is where all the heavy lifting is, do, is being done. Um, it receives that uh, information and that's where it checks the database for um, you, the user, if you've made a user before. That is where it checks if the password is correct. That is where it looks up um, your specific um, uh, your specific information. Um, all of the heavy lifting, the, the processing, the data processing is done on the back end. And once that's done, it just sends back the information to the front end. And the front end's job is to present this information. So it doesn't do any of the heavy lifting. It doesn't check uh, databases. It doesn't do any of that. The front end's job really is to communicate with the back end. That's where all the, the heavy uh, data processing, where all the where all, where all the logic really lives, and then it just sends it back to the browser to the front end, and pre and that that's where it gets presented to you. The front end, the browser, the web page that you see is is very easy to describe because you're so familiar with it. You've seen probably a million pages, and you know what a website looks like and what it does. And it's harder to describe what a server is and how it looks like and what it does. But essentially, a server is just a computer somewhere else that holds code uh, that processes data. Um, when you communicate with a server uh, online, it just um, sends a request to that server, to that computer. That computer uh, performs calculations and then sends that back. So what are the calculations that it might do? So we've already mentioned um, uh, checking in its, uh, um, in its database for you uh, as a user for your login and your password and making sure that it's correct. Um, that is one type of um, process that goes on uh, uh, at the back end in the server. Another thing might be um, once it has your user, looking up your specific settings, your specific information uh, there that it also has in a database. So the server is usually a powerful computer or a computer that can perform these calculations and it's just somewhere else doing it. So that is front and back end. And when you work with web development, these are terms that you're going to hear a lot and people are ask, people will ask, do you work with front end or back end or both or, or um, uh, are you full stack, which means that do you know how to do both basically. Um, but then you also have this concept of a client server model, um, which is very similar, but not exactly the same. So I thought I would kind of tease out the, the, the differences here. So much like the front and back end interacts with a um, request for something and a response with something, the client server has the same um, structure. You have a client, which in the case of the web is the browser. Um, and then you have a server, which in the case of the web is a server. This is why it's a little bit confusing because you're using the same terms and they're very similar, but there's a little bit of a difference. So if you expand your idea of what a client could be outside of a browser, then you're starting to maybe understand um, why this distinction matters. So a client is really just anything that requests uh, information or requests something from a server. So in the case of uh, the web, that is a browser, but uh, a smartwatch is also a client and your cell phone or mobile phone is also a client. If you game, um, when you um, play uh, online, your computer becomes the client because it's asking a game server for information. And the reason why this is um, an important distinction is that what if you had one server 
that wanted to serve several different clients. So what if you had one server, but you wanted to be able to send this information both to a computer and a smartwatch? So then you can't really um, tie the server code super a lot to specifically websites or specifically uh, smartwatches because you would want that to be very general. You would want a client, no matter what client, to ask for uh, data and you would want the same server to be able to send that data back and then the front end is what handles the presentation. Uh, doing this allows you to have one server for many different clients and you can maybe link devices. So you would want to have uh, a server a code that could ju just as easily send information to a mobile phone as to a, um, uh, a, micro uh, a microwave. I mean, stupid example, but you understand what I mean. You don't want to tie your server to just one client. You want the server to be very general and serve any client. And you want the client to handle um, processing the information from the server. Um, and this is really helpful if you want to, like I said, link several devices or have the same information uh, on different platforms. So let's take Google, for example. If you ever used Google Keep, you know that you can have it on your phone, on your, on your computer, even on your smart, smart watch. So you don't want three different servers to um, handle the login and sending back information to you. You want one server to do that and just send you the information, let's say the text of your specific Google Keep note. Um, so you just send back the text itself and then the client, whether it's your smartwatch, your mobile phone or your computer, it takes that text and depending on the client presents that text um, in the format that that client um, uh, is designed in. Um, and doing this allows you to not only link but also not write as much code and have a general server that can just um, respond to a lot of different clients. So to go back to front and back end, front end really is more concerned with visual presentation and sending input. And here you work a lot with um, uh, something called CSS, which is a, a language that um, you use to style your website. So for example, uh, in CSS, you specify that the background is going to be blue and the font of the website is going to be um, Times New Roman, terrible font, but whatever. Um, and you specify that um, every link that exists on the website is going to be bright pink. Um, so CSS allows you to take elements of your website and decide how they're going to look. And it also allows you to um, do a layout for your website. Is your uh, menu going to be on the right side or on the left side? And so on and so forth. You have HTML, which I'm sure you've heard of. Uh, and we're going to go through that a bit more later. And you have the JavaScript, which is what makes you, um, what makes it possible to interact with and send input to the backend. So if, that's what the front end does. What does the back end do? What does it mean that it does the, the logic? Right. So let's get into that a little bit. So the logic and the business logic of the back end is uh, basically uh, all the decision making um, is done on the back end, on the server. So uh, not only does it um, handle databases looking um, uh, up credentials um, and things like that. But if, say, um, you have the back end for a, um, an online uh, shop, that is where the logic to, um, uh, where the information for how much uh, items cost is. Or if there's a discount that specific day, that is where the logic is to calculate the discount or make sure that it's active uh, right now or inactive right now. Um, that's where all the decisions are made 
everything is looked up when it comes to credentials and pricing in this case and um, um, information about articles, uh, product IDs, that's where all of that is kept and all the decisions um, are made and all the da data is processed. So they have very different jobs um, and all of the heavy lifting is really done uh, on, the, uh, on the back end side on the server. So the entire web, the entire sending requests and responses back and forth is enabled by networking, by being online and with uh, protocols. So protocols are standards and guidelines for how these interactions, this communication between the front end and the back end is going to be handled, how it's going to, what it's going to look like. So we have the protocol HTTP, HTTP and HTTPS. Um, HTTP is uh, an older standard, it's still used, uh, but it defines how this communication is going to, um, how, it, how it works, how it's going to, um, what it looks like. HTTPS, HTTPS, yes, uh, is um, a secure version of HTTP because um, as technology became more complicated and as more and more sensitive information was getting sent online um, back and forth, such as the banking, um, insurance, uh, personal information about people, um, uh, malicious actors found ways to um, uh, intercept these, this communication and steal uh, information and uh, use it against people or, or use it to log into somebody's bank and transfer money and so on and so forth. So people realize that, oh no, we need to make sure that this communication back and forth is more secure than it's been before. So the S uh, at the end of HTTPS stands for secure. So it's an extra layer, an extra added layer of encryption on top of the old standard. Um, most of the web nowadays is in HTTPS because, um, well, we live in a world where we are online and um, our information is valuable and um, we've slowly gone over to using this pretty much everywhere and websites want to use this because uh, it's pretty bad for business if you uh, if their users get their um, information stolen from them. So how this works basically um, which with HTTP and HTTPS it's really hard to say um, is that we've talked about the uh, request and response and how the uh, server uh, and the front end talk to each other. So this request and response is actually an HTTPS request and an HTTPS response. So these protocols are just guidelines on how they're going to communicate. This isn't something you really write in your code, but it's important for you to know that these protocols exist, that that's what they, um, what they do, what they are, um, even though that they're not really super um, uh, integral to, you don't really code with them, you don't really use them, uh, you don't specify them as variables and so on and so forth. But you do need to know that there are protocols on how servers and um, the front end communicates with each other. So when it comes to um, creating the, the front end, rendering the, the, the website, remember rendering is to um, generate a 2D or 3D image uh, from, from information. You really have two ways of doing it. So either you can do server side, side rendering or uh, front end rendering. So if you do server side rendering, you on the server side, on this in the in the server code, the server logic, um, you write it so that uh, what you send back is a um, finished HTML. You uh, just have that completely done, and you send that to the front end. Now the front end still adds on top of that uh, styling and uh, the JavaScript on the front end still adds interactivity and uh, handles um, the process of sending 
um, um, request to the to the server. Um, but what it receives back is the entire HTML page with all the information, the text, the um, uh, images, what, what have you, embedded into the HTML itself. And um, this is uh, a lot faster. Um, it, um, since all the heavy lifting is done on the, on the uh, back end, what you get back is uh, gets loaded very, very quickly. And then there's front end rendering. When it comes to front end rendering, you um, just get, you do still get a, a, a basic HTML page from the server, but it's not built on the server. It's not put together. The, the, there's no embedded text. There's no embedded images, nothing like that. So with server, server side, um, all of that gets built on the server, then sent as a done package, done deal. With front-end rendering, you get the HTML and you uh, just a basic structure and you get the information, uh, usually in text format uh, to the front-end. And what the front-end then does is that it's responsible to put together the HTML, the basic uh, HTML, and the information that they uh, that it got from the server and build the website in the browser. So there the browser is responsible for putting the page together. So the reason why this is very um, useful is that front end um, tools are very dynamic, interactive. There's a lot of different um, helpful libraries and frameworks that you can use to make web pages very uh, fun to use and beautiful and uh, interactive. Um, you have a lot of popular frameworks and uh, like React that um, help you out and have a, a lot of functions that make uh, front-end rendering uh, very easy, intuitive and easy to jump into. And since there's so many tools for this, it's also quite easy to create impressive um, websites using front-end rendering. So in speaking about the server sending text to the front-end, just the basic information that you want to um, visually display, it's usually sent in a format called JSON, J-S-O-N. So um, this is very easy to read um, and very easy to understand. And this is a very universal language. So if you have a server that sends JSON, you can read, you can use that text on any browser. It's very general um, and pretty much all uh, backend languages. So you have um, Java, you have Python, you have JavaScript, they can all, um, both send, um, work with, and understand JSON. It's a very universal computer to computer, um, uh, program to program, um, framework to framework, tool to tool uh, sort of language. Very um, understandable by all. And since it's so easy to uh, understand as a human being as well, when you get that text from the server, you can um, use it and slot in that specific information into the outline of your uh, website. So say that you have um, specified that on the top, you're going to have the user's name, and then you're going to have the user's bio. Um, so you ask the server for uh, the user's name and bio, and um, you are holding a space for, for where that uh, name and bio is going to be. Uh, when the server gets the request, it sends back this um, JSON response. So in your code in the front end, you ask it to, hey, look up in JSON where name is, and when you find that, put that here. And this is how you can, with one server, um, send responses to many, many clients. This is why you can use Google Keep and um, display it on your, both your phone and your uh, computer. Even though the, the, 
the receiving the client the receiving client might have different code bases so maybe since me for example i have an android phone uh, it might use java uh, it can still read the json and it can still slot in my specific uh, google keep notes uh, into place but in the browser where uh, it uh, the front end is rendered with javascript it can also read the same json the same uh, information getting sent by the server and um, use uh, in the same way slot in that text um, into place um, and that's why json is such a powerful and um, universal and well-liked um, way of sending information from the server uh, out to different clients because you can just use it for anything and it's easy to slot in that text where you want it where you've specified on the front end i usually like to think of it as uh, maybe frames and pictures or art in that frame so if the front end always is the frame and says here is where the specific information that the user um, is requesting is going to go once i get it um, the json is the uh, content uh, the, the art uh, that's going to be inside of that frame but then when you ask for new information you ask for uh, um, something else you get sent a new json and you still have the same frame on the front end but you get a different piece of art so it's interchangeable. The front end never changes and saves, uh, reserves a spot for the text for the information. And the server sends that text and slots it into where the front end has said that it's going to um, land once it's there. Um, and that is how you can, like I said, serve many clients from one server. <coughs> So we're going to go into a little bit about of the big three of client side programming or front end programming. And the reason we're going to do this is that it's a much easier place to start than back end. Um, it's a good way to kind of get familiar with the web and, and coding in general and just see what it's all about. Um, and that's also what you're going to start with uh, client side uh, coding. So we have uh, three basic components or languages that you use to code on the, on the front end. We have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And they all have separate jobs, and they all do different things, and they all work together. So, HTML is a markup language. If you've ever seen um, these sort of tags where it says maybe P, and then it says, uh, so there's a little crocodile mouth p then there's a text and then there's another crocodile mouth backslash p crocodile mouth closing um, that is a, um, a a tag uh, an element it's a paragraph right so you have paragraphs you have headings and html is like the skeleton it says that this here is a heading this here is categorized as a uh, paragraph and over here, this one, this, this element is categorized as a link. This one is an image. And what HTML does is not only categorize what uh, the elements of your website is going to be, or what they are going to be, but also uh, what order, order they're going to be in. So you start with a heading, then you have a paragraph, then you have an image, then you have another paragraph, and then you have a, at the end a footer where you maybe have a contact or um information about the uh the website um so it structures it. it 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 doesn't do anything much more than that but it it sets the structure of what goes where so if that's html um it looks pretty bad if you just look at it straight it just it's just text and very not fun to experience so we have css so CSS um, uses these tags, these definitions, such as the P of paragraph, and it allows you to style them. So in your CSS file that you have uh, for your website, you specify that all paragraphs or this paragraph uh, will have the font size of 12, and it will use this specific awesome font. Uh, Roboto. Um, 
then you have um, that this heading is going to be bold. So you uh, take the HTML tag um, and then you specify that it is going to be bold. Um, and doing this changes the look of the website. So you start off with just a basic um, white background, black text, just straight up and down um, the way you would have it in a Word document. And using the CSS, you, you change these elements. Now you don't change the structure of it on the page. The HTML defines the structure but you can, you can um, move it visually uh, for the user. So you can say that, oh, this paragraph is going to be a little bit more to the right or a little bit more to the left. So you can move it around and create the layout that way. Um, so if that's the visual look and the structure, what does JavaScript do? So JavaScript adds interactivity and is the thing that manages the um, sending the request to the server. So JavaScript makes it possible to um, fill in a little text area and um, save it to a database so that when you log in, you can get back what you saved in that text area. So if you, we think about what that would look like, so there is um, HTML element called text area so first you define that in your um, HTML code. Then you go into your CSS and you say that this is going to have a uh, pink background and the text is going to be dark gray and it's going to be this big, etc., etc. So you have the structure, you have the actual element specified, then you have the look of it. And then in uh, JavaScript you say, uh, you still reference the same element, you still reference that text area, and you say, when this button is pushed, the information inside of the text area is going to be sent to the server. And then the server takes care of what happens when it gets that text area. But each uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, they each have a part to play. Um, if we go with the idea of a login again, um, the HTML is going to specify that this is a form where you have two fields where you uh, have input, ask the user for input. And then the CSS says that, oh, it's going to have rounded corners and it's going to have a nice little drop shadow and the buttons is going to have a gradient and uh, it's going to be beautiful. And then uh, the JavaScript makes sure that um, it gets sent to the server to where the server is going to uh, process this information as a login and a password and then look up and make sure that it's uh, it's correct. So they're all important. They're, they all have their own jobs. So it's sort of like the HTML is the skeleton, the thing that holds everything up, the, the thing that defines where things are. Um, CSS is um, the skin and the, um, the clothing, the look, and JavaScript is the brain, the nervous system, the things that make, the, the, the language or the, the component that makes things happen uh, and makes it possible to interact with the website. So that was a little bit about web development and how the web works. Um, I hope it wasn't too confusing with the back-end, front-end, client-server. Um, like I said, they're, they're kind of used interchangeably, but uh, I feel like understanding that it's helpful to have one server that can send information to many clients um, is very helpful, and that um, the front-end is just the thing that um, renders and visualizes um, what you, the user, interacts with. I hope you understand and learned that, learned that um, uh, the web operates on this sort of um, request response model and that this um, interaction, this communication is governed by a protocol called HTTP 
uh, but today HTTPS because the S, uh, the secure part is very, very important. Um, and I hope that you have some insight into um, how the sending of information could look like. So either you could get text back and then the front end uh, processes that text and presents it, or the server could send the entire web page and the and just pres and the front end just presents what it gets from the server. Um, so that was about web development. Uh, you'll be getting into a lot more of this very very soon. Um, this is just a basic overview to get the idea of the whole mail service system request response. Um, and what jobs the back end and the front end has. Um, and the more you look into a web development, the more you'll see these terms of back end, front end, client server. And without knowing what they do, I mean, it's not super complicated what their individual jobs is or what their, their jobs are. Um, but without having that quick introduction, looking at it online, it is extremely confusing and people talk about it as if it's obvious and it's not. So this was an attempt to just give you that little information. So when you see server and backend, you kind of know what, what they do. And when you see um, front end, you kind of know what that's responsible for. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something and got some clarity. And I hope to see you in the next one.